Hey you, this is Mark and we're back with another Goose review. In this video, my goal is to give you the most comprehensive overview of the Burton Step-On bindings and boots. I'll be showing you the unboxing, close-ups of the parts, and how they work. I'll also compare using the Step-On system to using traditional boots and bindings. I've always hoped one day there would be a simpler, more convenient way to click into a snowboard similar to how skiers step into their skis, just clicking in and going. When Burton released these bindings, I was so excited to see this dream come true in a refined and reliable design. Imagine going from this, to this. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see my reviews after riding the step-ons for the next couple of weeks, months, and so on. Alright, let's crack this thing open. The reason I went with the Photon boots is because they were the only step-on boots that were offered in wide sizes. Here's a closer look at the cuff clip, which keeps your pants out of the way of the locking mechanism. These are the toe cleats, which I have more close-ups of later in the video. These toe hooks are really sleek. Man, going from binding straps to this. Included are the universal mounting system and all the hardware you'll need. Now, when I say universal, the bindings work with traditional mounting systems and Burton's channel mounting system, so it's compatible with any snowboard. Here's the included user guide, but I gotcha, I'll cover all of it in this video. I'll be mounting the bindings onto my Salmon Huck knife. Looking pretty nice, huh? What do you think? We all know it looks clean, but let me show you just how cleanly it works. Just like that, you're in and out of your snowboard. Here we have the Burton Photon Step-On Boots. And in case you didn't know, you need to buy the Step-On Boots to work with the Step-On Bindings because these boots have the built-in toe cleats. Burton does sell other Step-On Boot models, but only the Photon has the ankle straps. I read reviews of other Step-On Boots where people wished theirs had an ankle strap like the Photons do. This is because the strap provides a secure heel hold, which has that familiar feeling of an ankle strap on a traditional binding. Now let's take a look at the heel cleat. Right there is where it fits into the binding's high back. You can hear two clicks from the heel because there are two heel cleat engagement positions. They designed this feature to accommodate for underfoot snowpack. You can hear I'm able to lock the toe cleats in even with the heel in the first position and it's still secure. All it takes is a little more downward pressure to lock it into that second position. And with a simple lift of the release lever, you can step out by just twisting your boot. Now onto some close-ups of the toe cleats and toe clips of the bindings. Here's how they click together. I 
All it takes is a little twist to get out. These things not only look good, but they are so easy to use. They also include a leash in case the release lever is inadvertently opened while you're on the chairlift. Both of the boots have this little loop, so regardless of your riding stance, you can leash your lead foot. It's a nice safeguard to have. Now let's compare the step-on bindings to traditional bindings. For the next couple of clips, I'll be using the 2020 Salmon Huck Knife with Burton step-on bindings, comparing the ease of use to Malavita bindings on a 2020 Burton name dropper. Be sure to pay attention to the time it takes to get in and out, how many moving parts there are, and how stepping on is hands-free. Stepping on is so convenient because once your boots are laced up, you'll never have to reach down to get onto your snowboard. Getting out only takes one hand movement. With the step on system, you won't have to worry about binding straps getting in the way or being too loose. Here's the view from the back. Without binding straps, the board is so much lighter. The step-on bindings also have a feature of moving the foot pad forward or backwards based on your boot size, with notches clearly marked out. This is to ensure the right fit to add power to your turns. The Malavitas have a knob to adjust forward lean without any tools, while the step-ons use screws in the high back for adjustment. You'll need a number 2 screwdriver for that. Righty tighty to increase forward lean, and vice versa. The step-on bindings do not have high back angle adjustment options, unlike traditional bindings, but it seems like the high backs are shaped in a way to stay comfortable and responsive, regardless of high back rotation. On the other hand, the Malavitas do have the capability to adjust the high back angle. This way, you can keep them parallel to the board and fine-tune responsiveness, but with more customization, it is more complicated to set up. You also don't have to worry about the fit of your binding straps if you don't have any to begin with. One time I was snowboarding and one of my cartel bindings ankle straps came off when I was on the lift. I had to spend time searching in the snow to find it, but without hardware, my session ended early that day. I had to go down the mountain one-footed, and the step-on started to look like the more reliable option. But the question is, how durable are the step-ons over time, and how reliable are they on the mountain? Here's the wear from getting in and out of the bindings, just from recording this overview. So far they've worked well, and I'll be taking them on snow in my next videos. I'll be posting video updates of the step-on bindings periodically, so hit the subscribe button for those updates, tap that like button if my video helped you, and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.